of 13 years. So in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ only called to Tawheed, like I mentioned in, today, in today's khutbah. Then he was taken up to the heavens, and the five daily prayers were made obligatory upon him without any intermediary between him and Allah the Most High in that. Then he commanded him after that with the hijrah, migration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in, in Mecca, while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Mecca every hour for 13 years, he was taken up to the heavens and salah was made obligatory upon the Muslims. When he returned back to Mecca, and descended back from the heavens, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued with his da'wah until he was commanded to make al-hijr. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after 13 years in living in, in Mecca, he migrated to al Madinah where he was ordered with jihad. So jihad only became only obligatory upon the Prophet Sallallahu whilst he was in Medina, after the Islamic State was established under one Imam and for the purpose of eradicating the shirk that the people had fallen into. So he spoke in jihad for the sake of Allah, a true striving for nearly 10 years. So the whole 10 years was considered a period of jihad. Not only jihad is not only considered a jihad with the sword. Fighting against shirk can be done, and doing jihad with shirk can be done with the pen, can be done with the tongue, and can be done with the sword. And the Prophet ﷺ carried out all forms of jihad when it came to the pen, meaning the Prophet ﷺ wrote letters to the people, to the kings and the leaders, commanding them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The Prophet ﷺ, he also gave da'wah. And by giving da'wah, he fought against shirk. The Prophet ﷺ also fought physically in battles against those who committed shirk with him. So when he had completed for nearly 10 years until the people entered into the deen of Allah in droves. So when the people entered into Islam in numbers, in multitudes, the Prophet ﷺ then completed his mission. A mission which took him 23 years. At the age of 63, the Prophet ﷺ passed away and the religion of Islam was al complete. And by this, Alhamdulillah, we have completed our book uh, with regards to learning about at tawhid With regards to the Prophet, the following points need to be highlighted. The first point is that the Prophet was an Arab. Secondly, he was from the tribe of Quraysh. Thirdly, the, the tribe of Quraysh was the most elite and the best of all tribes. Fourthly, the Prophet ﷺ was loved by the people of Mecca. He was called Al-Amin As-Sadiq, the truthful one, the trustworthy one. The Prophet ﷺ's da'wah started with the da'wah of dispute. The Prophet ﷺ first called to Tawheed and the abandoning of a ship. The Prophet ﷺ continued giving da'wah for 13 years whilst in Mecca. Then he was commanded to migrate to Al-Madinah. The Prophet ﷺ lived in Medina for 10 years. In those 10 years, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did jihad. He did jihad with the pen, he did jihad with da'wah, and he did jihad with the sword. The only purpose that jihad was legislated and permitted for the Muslims is that because there was an Islamic state that was established, there was a Muslim ruler, and that everybody had gathered under the one ruler, which was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the jihad was a means to an objective, not the means by itself, as some people may have made, have made it and have perverted the true understanding of al-jihad, that the purpose and the objective of al-jihad, or the or one of the objectives to serve and the objective of, uh, was, was to establish the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died at the age of 63 and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was buried in the Hujra or the chamber of Aisha radiallahu anha in his city which is known as al Madinah to Nabawiyyah alayhi salatu wa salam wa akhir da'ana and alhamdulillahi wa rabbil alayhi wa Any questions? With regards to what I mentioned, I mentioned to you the Vabit and not the number, because there is a, some of the ulama have deferred with regards to some of the numbers of, for example, Luqman, whether he was a prophet or a messenger, whether he was a prophet or not, with regards to Khidr. 
What I will mention to you is that the definition that every single messenger is a prophet and not every single pro uh, prophet is a messenger. So every single prophet has to be a messenger. I'm sorry, every single messenger has to be a prophet, but not every single prophet is a messenger. This is al haddul fasil or al fawarid or al farq bayna al nabi wa rasul. There is a, with regards to the prophets, with regards to the messengers, they say that over 300, as mentioned in some narrations, and regards to the prophets, some say over 100,000. Some hold the hadith to be authentic, some hold it to be weak. So like we, we, we generalize, like Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ نُوحِ وَالنَّبِيِّنَ مِنْ بَعْدِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَوْلِ تَعَالَ وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَسَسْنَاهُ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْرِ وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْسَسْهُ عَلَيْكَ وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُسَى تَقْلِيمٌ So many prophets and messengers have been sent. The exact number is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as Allah mentions in the Qur'an. The Uli Al-Azm. Naam. They have been agreed upon that. Talk about Ibrahim, Musa, Isa. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Uli al-Azm Istighfar Salah of forgiveness yes. Sorry, Salah of istighfar No, istighfar is done by the person himself you do, you do, the person needs to do Salat al-Istikhara by himself. You don't tell somebody else to do Salat al-Istikhara for you. The most common in Kafir and Arab, you find someone, they say for the God. On TV, if you want to do Salat al-Istikhara, you pay 300 pounds. <laughs> and live, you will do Istikhara for you. Some of these channels you will see that uh, the guy, the Sheikh is sitting there and you send your payment and on live on TV, he will tell you. He will do Istikhara for you. The sunnah as taught by the Prophet is that you do istikhara yourself. And istikhara is done on issues where there is confusion. Sometimes people think that you do istikhara, you don't find the Sahaba Ridwan Allah doing istikhara on issues that were clear for them. You know? Um, people came to the Prophet وسلم, asked him about getting married. The Prophet didn't say, do go to istikhara whether you should get married or not. The issue was clear. That they needed a woman, they needed to get married. So they looked for the woman. Now, if there is a situation where you have been offered two jobs and you do not know which job, in which job there is khair and you're trying to weigh them up, you make it istikhara. If you have proposed to two women to get married and both women have said yes and you don't, you don't know which woman is better for you, then you can make istikhara unless you want to take both of them as your wives. Naam, Yashir. 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 The, 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 we were talking about Tawheed, but everybody is talking about Istikhara. Yes. All the men are planning to get married or what? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Everybody is asking about Istikhara. This question just came up to me because of Tayyip. You know where that in the dua you have to mention the name of nah. something you want. Nah. If you don't know that name in Arab. Ma fi bas, you can say it in English. You can say it in English. Inshallah. Allah. Allah understands all languages. As Abu Zayd al Qirawani. Imam Abu Zayd al-Qirawani was asked this question. He said, Allah understands all languages. You can make dua to Allah in any language. Allah understands all languages. Naam. Tawheed? You know that question is, who is your prophet? Naam. So, everyone will be asked that. Naam. How will they? They, the, the Prophet was not their prophet. But they were told 
that the Jews and the Christians were told about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So they won't be asked this question. This question is specifically for this Muslim woman. So the three questions that are going to be asked in the grave are for the Muslim Ummah. The Prophet ﷺ's Ummah is divided into two, into two, two groups. Ummah da'wah and Ummah al-Istijah. The Ummah which the Prophet ﷺ gave da'wah to, that's the whole of mankind. And the one who accepted his message, then these are the Muslims. Both Ummah da'wah and Ummah al-Istijah will be asked this question. So the Prophet ﷺ, the Mad'uween, the people who the Prophet ﷺ gave da'wah to, are of two types. The da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ that has reached the four corners of the earth, of this world, that has reached the, uh, the red and the black, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. They are either Ummat al Ummat uh, Da'wah or Ummat al Istijaba. Ummat al Istijaba is those who accepted his da'wah, and Ummat al Da'wah are those who have been. Uh, by, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the message of Allah system reaches them. Meaning the Jews and the Christians, the Hindus, everybody is Ummah to Da'wah. Nobody is exempted from the Da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu They are all addressed and they are all the, the people that should be given Da'wah with regards to Al-Islam. Now. Now. Yeah. Huh? Sorry, if you? If we just born and die. Nah, huh? We born and do that. If, if the baby has just been born and died, will be, will be asked the same question. Wallahu a'ala. Good question. I don't know. No. From what I understand is that if you are born and then, then, then you die, understand? Then you have died upon the Al Fitrah. If you had died upon Al Fitrah, then you will not be asked this question. One, because. You would not reach the age of liability. Allahu Alam. So somebody who dies, who is born as a Muslim in a Muslim family and dies and is a small child, then he will go to Jannah, inshaAllah. My question is, you talked you talk about uh, Al-Hikmah. Now. And you explained it as... No.